Yeah, I, I think it's this guy. I really do. Oh, that's, you know, that's why. They'll attack left to right, Pittsburgh right to left. Carl Heinz Grudica, 59 goals this season, nine hat tricks. What a player. Off the boards, Derek Spaulding trying to run it through. Off the boards, he'll get his own pass, going in deep into the corner. He and Hagen bang for it. Spaulding wins it, but will lose the ball. Liverich up the left side, broken up, picked up by Grinitza. Karl Heinz Grinitza, the sting leader and captain, cutting to his right foot, plays it on the right side board. Simon did off the boards, but Papaleo stops that one. This may create a change also for Chicago because yesterday, after Franz Mafieu left the game with an injury, Simon did Mark Terlecki and did a good job, and now he's on with his first unit. So we may see some change yet on the part of Willie Roy, at least if he wants Simon to on Terlecki. Earhart cap in his own zone, a scoreless tie. We've just gotten started. 14 minutes, 17 seconds remaining, and it's the opening quarter from the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. And Chicago applying high pressure, which makes it very difficult for Pittsburgh to get out of their end. They did that yesterday, but not until, second as I recall, half. the second half or second quarter. Not second half. That's right. That's it was right. the third quarter. An interception by Child. The shot is blocked by Naguera. Child scores on his rebound. So Pittsburgh, for the second straight game at home, gets on the board. Very early in the game, and it's Paul Child who will get the goal. Now, this is what Pittsburgh must do. Capitalize on the mistakes by Chicago. Paul Child intercepted a square pass. Shot the ball, and the girl came out, got off the angle, carried the ball high up against the boards, and then the board came, the ball came back, and Child followed up and put it in. The goal came at 103. Child's goal has to be on assist, and he took it right off of Granitza. A bad pass by Granitza. You don't see that often where he puts the ball out like he did there. Victor Moreland now on to Chicago. Two new units for the respective teams. Jose Marrero knocking up the right side for Mike Lasha, blocked by Dave McKenzie, who is on with Kevin Marr. John Kowalski told us before the game that O'Hara and Topolsky have seen a lot of action lately, and you might see them rested at the start of this game. On the left side, Kofus off the boards for Andrew Parkinson. Kafka out there along with Sibbies and Terlecki. Kevin Marr and Dave McKenzie. Marr breaking up the play, but Chicago turns it back inside for Lashev to the right wing side boards. Kenzie and Terlecki there to defend. Lashev goes for his own ball off the boards. It's punched out by Papaleo. Sibby's in some traffic. Toes it to the near side boards. McKenzie for Kapka. Blocked. Mack will get it back. Bangs it off the boards for Sibby's over the midfield line. one nothing Spirit leading it. Sibby's can't get around Frank Kopas, who plays it back to Victor Naguera. Long toss up the field for Lashev. McKenzie on him. Played to Parkinson. They tried to give and go, but McKenzie wouldn't let Lashev run around him and thus get to the corner ahead of him. Mack being bothered by Lashev and now just kicks it right back to Papaleo. Joe is 0-1 against Chicago this year with a 4.12 goals against average versus that team. 5.31 is his goals against average coming into the game and he has played very well of late. Over the last six quarters, he has allowed just eight goals. McKenzie dumping it into the right wing boards. Terlecki in the attack zone. Turning on Morero. Waits has to tackle away from him. Stan trying to win it back. Now it's poked ahead on the right side. Lashev coming back left to right for Chicago. Pittsburgh leading it 1-0. It's fed it to Parkinson. A nice tuck on the ball as he tried to get it inside to Morera. Can't do it, but Lashev will get it from Kopas. Lashev by the penalty arc area. Smith on him. Good cutting right to left, but he shot it wide. Rebound will come all the way out. Morera from Simonton. Cut by Roberts to Morera, and he'll shoot one into the crowd. We go to a commercial break. One, I think, Pittsburgh. Okay. This is the Back live at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, John Paul Della Camera with Bruno Schwartz. It is a 1-0 Pittsburgh Spirit lead. Cap up the right side for Liverich. Broken up by Derek Spaulding. Another giveaway. Hagen with a shot. That's wide. Picked up by Cap as he tried to drill it. He was pushed on the side and couldn't get a shot away. Now in the corner, Liverich. Bump by Simonton. I thought there'd be a foul for sure. No call. Hagen will get it. Out for Child. Nicks it over on the right wing side boards. Gordon Smith 70 feet away. Holding it in a one-nothing spirit lead. Off the boards for Leverage. Spirit goal came on an interception by Child. Shot it the first time and he got his own rebound. High off the glass behind the world. Gordon Smith holding it. 
Try to play it in. It's deflected by Hagen to the right boards for Child. He got a piece of it, but Neil Roberts is there. They're going to call a dangerous play on Roberts, and that's only the first dangerous foul play. of the quarter, which is interesting because normally the referees call fouls early in this league, and they sort of trail off towards the end. At least that's been the general style this season. We went quite a ways. 409 to be exact before a foul was called. Hagen on the set piece. Out for Gordon Smith. The shot is deflected wide to the near boards. Granitza holding it. Plays it with the left foot over to the far boards. Neil Roberts holding it. Roberts, normally a forward, can play in the back. That's where he is right now. But you've got to respect him coming forward. And when he goes forward, Derek Spalding, who's normally a defender, is right there. He's an excellent player going forward to the attack. And that happened yesterday. She and it goes out of play. We go to another break. It is 1-0 Pittsburgh. This is the spirit. Come back live on a free kick. Gordon Smith smacked the ball. It hit Carl Heinz Grenitz in the face. He came off to the bench. Willie Roy screamed at him to go back on, and he and Grenitz had a little battle going on right down below us. Carl Heinz was visibly upset. I think Roy just said to him, What are you doing coming back here? You only get hit in the face, not knowing how hard it was, and Willie being as tough as he is. But I'll tell you what, Carl Heinz was not going back. He will be back. You can guarantee yourself that. But he was hot as he came to the bench, and he and Roy had a very short but very lively argument. Ball played upfield now for Sibby's a one nothing spirit lead. Knocked back to McKenzie. Over to the far side for Kevin Marsh, Chicago with a full carpet pressure. Again, that's very tight man-to-man -man marking, which makes it difficult for Pittsburgh to get out. you got to have a lot of movement up front in order to get the ball in the attacking zone. Sibby's for Tulecki, too soft in the pass. Mark comes up to take it for Kapka. Pittsburgh controlling it, chipping it for Sibby's is in a hot streak has scored a goal in nine of his last 11 games. Ian bumped along the far side by Victor Moreland. Moreland will come up with it. It's a one nothing spirit lead, 8.25 to go, first quarter. Foul shows Chicago with two nothings for Pittsburgh. Moreland bringing it in for Parkinson, lays it out for Lasha. Tackled away by Kevin Marr, but it's right out to Kulpitz. To Parkinson, 35, 40 feet from goal, takes it to the left, a shot off the goal post after Papaleo caught it off his left hand. So Joe got a piece of it enough to deflect it, which stopped it from going in. So a good big save for Joe in the first quarter. Long ball played up for Trelecki is deflected off the boards. Chicago's Parkinson will get it. A one nothing spirit lead on Child's 24th goal of the season. No assist as he intercepted the ball from Carl Heinz Granitza. That may be one of the reasons uh, Willie Roy is upset with Carl Heinz Granitza having caused the first goal. Civis will come back the other way for Pittsburgh over the midfield line. Brings it to the attack zone, Deking Roberts to the right. Sibby's in the corner, it's deflected and picked up by Morera. Morera doing a very good job on uh, Terlecki thus far in duels. I think Morera has won three times and Stan has yet to beat him. Kapka with it. Looking long for Terlecki, but it's broken up. Morera just did a better job of coming toward that ball when it hit off the boards. And then what you've got to watch is Morera going forward after he wins the ball against Terlecki. He gets into the attacking zone and usually unmarked. He's a quick player from Uruguay. Ball banging along the board. Chicago will get it. Roberts out to the right point. Rudy Glenn fires a shot up high off the glass, headed down. Now Roberts with another try, and that's banged out by Z. Kapka. So Chicago putting some pressure on. Yeah, very aggressive in the attacking third and putting using the boards very effectively. Pittsburgh's going to have to get organized and start watching the men. Now it is Manny Rojas. Broken up by Kapka. Z towing it ahead for Sibis. Has a chance, breaking through. Outside the box, cuts inside the shot, deflected to Lecky after broken up. Klopas getting there first. On the run up the left wing side comes Klopas. Now to Simonton. A one nothing spirit lead, 6.25 to go, first quarter. On the left, Rojas pulls the trigger, shoots it too high. Leverich blocked on the near side by Spaulding. Now Mark just heads it back from Gordon Smith to Papaleo. Long throw, up for Child, trying to catch the Chicago defense. Paul Child on the right, cutting it towards the center. Takes a shot with the left foot, it's deflected. Coming in is Hogg, and he shoots it high. It's loose in the box, gets by everybody. Both Glenn and Child going in after. Now Gordon Smith running into the corner. 
Still a one nothing spare lead. Nicks it in for Hagen. He shot it too high. Nice set of Gordon Smith laying the ball at the feet of Hagen. Now it's cleared up high by Rudy Glenn. Off the scoreboard, we have another break. That was a good timing run. Uh, Gordon Smith waiting for Hagen. Nine of Chicago, a one nothing spirit lead. Childs, 24th of the year. That's the only one that was unassisted. Liverage plays it off the right boards for Child. He bangs it off the boards, one at Hagen or Liverage, but it's headed back by Spaulding to Victor Naguer, and he's coming out. He likes to roam. He'll send this one too far over three lines. We go to a commercial break, one nothing Pittsburgh. This is the Spirit Soccer Network. Chicago with the ball, losing it in their own end. Gordon Smith shoots one up high. It was deflected, I thought, but now they're going to call it the other way. I thought McGall. Victor Moreland. Long one for Hayden Knight, who celebrates his 28th birthday on St. Patrick's Day this afternoon. Now Neil Roberts in the neutral zone for Hayden Knight. Back for Roberts at the midfield line. Roberts give and go with Morera. Off the boards. Running it into the corner. Kapka and Terlecki are there. Played off the boards for Morera, deflected. Terlecki will get it. They're going to call a foul on Ian Sibbies. Stan would have been off to the races. That's right. One on one. And a lot of space behind uh, the Chicago defense there. And Terlecki, with his speed, could have taken advantage of that. Roberts, they tried to give and go. Broken up by McKenzie up for Kapka. Z was trying to lead for Terlecki. Stan was running to the middle, and the ball went outside. Moreland will bring it back the other way. For Hayden Knight by the penalty arc. Moreland will get it back. Takes the shot blocked by Kapka. Sibby's there as well, and Pittsburgh will come up with it. Still leading 1-0. Played up for Trelecki. Murray just steps in front of him, makes a nice play again. All the way back to Neil Roberts, and now back to Naguera. So it's interesting that uh, despite the fact that Simonton did a nice job on Trelecki yesterday, that Morera will get the assignment right now. Well, Simonton's coming out now, though, to mark Stan Trelecki as Morera is getting more and more into the attack. Sibby's. Can't get to the ball. It's taken away, though, and a great tackle by McKenzie. Rob Fernandez leads it for Trelecki, but it's a bit too far. Naguera lets it hop back into his box where he can use his hands. Great play by McKenzie all around, though, to set the offense up after making the defensive steal. Hagen with the ball now in the neutral zone. Pittsburgh attacking right to left. They lead 1-0, three and a half to go first quarter. Hagen back for McKenzie. Mack will run it into the attack zone. Deep into the corner, shooting it off the boards, broken up. Chicago will get it. McKenzie knocks it back, broken up again. Clear to the far side for Hayden Knight. Knight blocked by McKenzie, forcing him to go back to Naguera. We're approaching the three minute mark in five seconds. That's left in the opening quarter. And the Spirit still leading it by the score of 1 0. Rudy Glenn with it. Up for Marrera. Now Granitza, who's back on, played it up for Glenn, but he wasn't there. Carl Hines shouting some instructions at some players as well. Earhart Cap coming back. Long ball over three lines. That'll bring it back the other way. You know, when Earhart is marking Carl Hines Granitza, it takes him somewhat out of the offense. The only way he's going to go forward is if he knows for an absolute fact that his partner Gordon Smith is staying back and that he, Gordon Smith, will be able to get Granitza because Carl Hines is only going to go back so far. Or if Pittsburgh has total possession of the ball and Earhart can make a timing run and get the pass and have a good shot on goal. Paga now intercepting for Pittsburgh in their own end for Leverage. Mark Leverage, 58 goals last year to lead the MISL. Running it into the attack zone for Hagen. Now Leverage will get it back. Pokes it for Hagen. A little confusion there. Hagen, a shot and a score. Child on the doorstep. Right spot, right time for Paul Child. He gets his second goal of the game. the pass and Paul Child just had to take his foot in the path of the ball and 
It uh, happened yesterday as well. Only Leverage played it through. On the same power play. play, right. Child was in the same spot. Child now leading it for Gordon Smith into open space into the attack zone. Smith in the corner off the boards. Leverage trying to cut it. Now Camp will get it. Try to settle it down. Earhart now for Gordon Smith. Hog at his back. He'll mark Granitza in this setup. Chicago now looking for the ball at the red line, and Granitza came back to help out. Carl Heinz Granitza broken up on a poke by Earhart Cap on the right side. Paul Child. Child in the corner. Looking, sending it out to Mark Leverage. Leverage holding it. 35 feet from goal on his off wing side. Shoots it with his right foot, and it just went wide. Picked up by the Sting. 134 to go. First quarter in the spirit lead at 2-0. Child's second of the game is 25th of the year at 12.40 from Dave Hoggett. Up comes Spalding. 40 feet from goal. Plays it to Granitza. Tackled away by Cap. Granitza going down. Now it is Parkinson to the right side. Roberts left footed shot. Now Granitza the rebound. And that goes wide into the box of Papaleo. Falls on to him. Joe will roll it right side for Paul Child. 107 to go first quarter. It has been Pittsburgh's quarter. They lead 2-0. Up for Gordon Smith. He'll leave it for Trelecki as Pittsburgh tries to change up on the fly. Stan plays it off the boards for Child. Kicked away by Naguera. Now Moreland off the boards. Ostalchik gone for his first shift. Strips him of the ball. Up for Trelecki. Stan blocked. Ball's taken away. Ostalchik in there hustling for it. But now it goes back on the right side for Parkinson. Up for Grinitza. Reverses it to Klopas. 38 seconds left first quarter. Spirit up 2-0. Good, good defensive effort thus far from the Pittsburgh Spirit in the first quarter. Uh, Chicago has very few shots. I'm not sure how many, but very few shots on goal. Cap is taken down on the far wing side, and now Rudy Glenn will come up with it in the neutral zone. Bad ball back to Naguera. Green almost picked it off. Now Trelecki will get it. Naguera is backing up. Stan tried to lead Ostalchik, but it's blocked. Greg in there working the line of Ostalchik with Green and Stan Trelecki. So John Kowalski trying to mix some things up. Make sure that he has some fresh players because if you're going to play at this pace, and especially with the travel schedule this week, you've got to be fresh. Ball played now to Granitza. Did he get a hand on Yes. Only a second left, but that's how dangerous he is because he would have, had he controlled it, been able to get a shot on goal. And there, at the end of the quarter, he could have given Chicago a big one. Well, he was right on top of the penalty area when the ball came down, and he would have taken it. that role, Cap and Smith are the defenders. Now it is Earhart Camp running it up the field from Pittsburgh. He'll take a shot. It's blocked. Child will get a piece of it out to Camp. Right foot a drive. Save Naguera. Pittsburgh almost scored in the opening 12 seconds of this, the second quarter. And a good solid drive it was by Earhart Camp. Well, with his right foot instead of the normal left. Got a lot on it. Neil Roberts looking for Granitza, and Gordon Smith stepped right in front of him and cut it off. Yeah, Granitza a little bit lazy that time, was waiting for the ball. He must go to the ball in order to get it. Upfield has played to Hagen, now to Leverage, but it's behind Mark. He'll get it in the neutral zone. Leverage playing it up for Hagen. They want the give and go. Leverage in the corner. Off the boards for Hagen, but it came out at a too sharp an angle, too steep, actually. And Hagen had already gotten by it, and Chicago will take it over. 14-12 to go. Second quarter, Pittsburgh leading it 2 to nothing on the right wing side. Rojas plays it for Granitz outside the box. Cap stops him from turning. Now he doesn't stop him from passing, and a shot is just wide of Papale on the part of Rojas. Looked like Granitz was stopped, but you've You've got to have the guy handcuffed, basically, to prevent him from doing any kind of damage. Cap had him in the corner, and he still got the ball out on the pass. Yeah, and Hagen came to help out, so he was double teamed. He got the ball out to Rojas, which left him wide open, and he had a shot on goal. Now Roberts on the interception for Simon, then up the left wing side. Rojas into the attack zone of Pittsburgh. Left wing corner, Granitz, a quick turn save by Pampaleo. And he'll roll it right side for Child. That time Granitza tried to turn before he had the ball to catch Cap off guard if he could. Now Chicago will get it back. On the right side, a quick shot and a score. Papaleo got a piece, but not enough on the shot from Manny Rojas. And maybe it's kind of uh, sort of like justice because he should have had one before. And the way, uh, that's right, uh, John Paul. Uh, Manny Rojas, of course, comes up uh, big for Chicago, taking the ball home. The ball was turned over again at that uh, red line. Uh, because of the high pressure of uh, Chicago, Granitza gets the ball, waits for uh, Rojas to come to his right side, commits the defenders, and Rojas just put the ball home after Joe Papalea came off the line. Rojas, 16th of the year from Granitza. See, what hurts Pittsburgh and has hurt them all season is that right before that, Cap had gotten up a great shot. And with any kind of luck, the ball goes in there, but Naguera comes up, makes the big save. And how many times after the big save do you get a big goal? We saw it just there. Back in the live action, Terlecki banging in the corner with Charlie Green. 
but Chicago will come up with the ball. Lead ball on the left side for Hayden Knight. Papaleo coming way out to get it. Up the field for Ostalchik. Simple touch tomorrow. Now back for Greg. Pittsburgh leading it two to one. Ostalchik on a good run to the right side boards. He plays it for Kevin Marr. Kevin is pushed by Clovis drawing the foul. First foul of the quarter on the Chicago Sting. Remember, if you get six, you sit in the box for two. Your team that has a minor penalty. It's played up for Green in the box. Try to throw it out for Stan, but it was a soft pass. Chicago breaks it up. Clovis back to Victor Naguera. Let's see what Chicago does now after getting that goal, if it picks them up offensively, and also, likewise, if it deflates Pittsburgh at all. Long ball up, Knight almost getting it off a of deflection, but it trickles in on Papaleo. Joe was going to go along with it. Now thinks better of it and rolls it to Kevin Marr. Right now we're seeing Chicago in a high-pressure man-to-man. So that goal gets him back in that frame of mind. Long ball up for Green is headed away by Chicago. Upfield, they want Magali, but Marr sends it back to Papaleo. Usually what happens after you give up a goal, everybody's a bit cautious and a bit nervous. So Chicago, realizing this, puts on high pressure to try to turn over ball early. McKenzie running off the left boards. Shoots it off the board, but Nagura is right there. No hold on the left side to Manny Rojas. Marr back to defend. Rojas leading it. Good run on the left side by Clopas, but there's Ostalchik to pick him up, and Marr will bang it from the box area up for Trelecki. Green running on the left side. Stan waits for the move, passes it to the left. It's off the mark, and now it's taken away by Fernandez. I think Stan thought Charlie was going to go one way and Charlie went the other. A little communication problem there. On the left side, Neil Roberts in the attack zone, 11.34 to go. Second quarter, it's a two to one spirit lead as a grenade to shot is blocked in the far boards. Greg Oskalcha got it. Greg did not make the trip yesterday to Chicago. Neither did George Tiger or Marcel Lake Greg is back, and basically the spot he's taking is that of Frank Sock was not dressed for this afternoon's game. Lake Day sitting out, so is Tiger. Bob Bosmar also sitting out. We thought that he might have been able to come back today. They'll get another five days before Pittsburgh goes back in action against Cleveland. On the right side, Gordon Smith shooting it. Off the left side of the goalpost and comes right back out. Manny Rojas coming it up field there, hard cap. The nine leading to the ball heads it back up field for Green. Now Fernandez settling it is Rojas to the left side. Now it is Sparling up the middle, straight up the middle, and back over the midfield line. He's got Rojas breaking his right wing. Someone will have to pick him up if he gets the ball. He'll get it. Hagen picks him up. The shot taken, blocked in front. Papaleo is diving. I don't know whether Joe got a piece or a defender from this angle. But Pittsburgh stopped it. Now Chicago getting it back. Pittsburgh was lucky, though, that Rojas did not get a good ball. On the right side, Rojas will bring it back in. Wants to cut. Now brings it to Granitza. Outside the box. Carl Hines off the boards. Deflected by Lippert. In the corner, Carl Hines again coming in, spawning. Luckily for Pittsburgh, he whacks it into the crowd. We go to a commercial break. 2-1 Spirit on the Spirit Soccer Network. As we come back, the Spirit are leading it 2-1. to one. Willie Roy trying to pull a fast one and shake Benitsa from their hard cap. We'll tell you about that in a moment as the ball is played long for Charlie Green. Green off to Greg Ostalchik. I'm ready to call the foul, but no one else is off the field. Now it's taken back by the Chicago Sting. Neil Roberts brings it up for Benitsa, blocked by Charlie Green. I was going to say before, Benitsa had a bit of a shorter shift on that last timeout. It left Cap out there with a new line for Chicago. That Spirit decided Cap needed a rest, well deserved. Willie Roy immediately upon seeing.
Right now, there's a bit of a delay. Nagora getting settled in his goal, and Bill Maxwell goes over to check things out. Again, we remind you that the Spirit are on the road this weekend, Friday night in Cleveland. You can join Bruno Schwartz and I for that game here on the Spirit Radio Network. And then Friday, March 29th, it's back here. So after all these games bunched in so few days, Pittsburgh all of a sudden won't be playing for a while. Have to get used to that. Roberts will play it upfield. Chicago controls. They'll get it back from Granitza. Blocked by Earhart Cap. Granitza comes in and blocks the ball with his body well, but it goes right to Papaleo from Gordon Smith. Pittsburgh will attack right to left this quarter. Chicago left to right. And apparently the Granitza line is going to stay out there, so Willie Roy is going to attack this line head on. Up the near boards for Liver. He'll let it go. He thought Child was there, but Simonton was instead. And at the Chicago red line, Possession takes place. It's back to Naguera now up on the left side for Neil Roberts. Ahead for Granitza. Picked up immediately by a hard cap. Up to Rojas. Cut off by Hagen and Tennant for Roberts who had gotten behind the defense. Hagen knocks it off the right boards for Leverage. He'll block a piece of the ball. It comes all the way back into Victor Naguera. He'll hold on. You know, when you mark Granitza, your, your first opportunity is you got to try to deny him the ball. He can't do anything without that ball. So that's your first step. Once he gets it, that's where I think all the fun starts and the actual hard work because he can do so much to you. Cap, so far, has done a great job in marking Granitza as Pittsburgh will start with their with the ball in their own zone and Papaleo will work it to Earhart Cap on the left wing. Carl Heinz is just so strong on the ball. And like, as you mentioned, uh, Joe Paul, you've got to deny him the ball and not let him go to work. Gordon Smith plays it up the right side for Ian Sibbies. His first shift after missing the last quarter. Sibbies working hard in the corner to win the ball. Tried to play it to Charlie Green, but Chicago got a piece of it. Good effort by uh, Sibbies. The line now is Sibbies with Green and Ostalchik. Chicago with the ball in their own end deep. Derek Spaulding trying to turn it back upfield up the left wing. He comes for Klopas. Knocked back. Sibbies got a piece of that. Ian, a very hard worker. We've pointed that out all season. Not afraid to come back and uh, scrape his knees for that ball. For a guy that scores as many points as he does, his defensive effort is there. And durability as well, having played in every game. On the left wing side, Pope is trying to reverse it to the near boards. Granitza will get it. Cuts it back for Jose Morera. Lets it go from 40 feet way wide. Headed down by Gordon Smith right to Papaleo. Joe throws it long for Charlie Green's breakaway speed. Charlie tried to knock it to Sibbies. He saw him open. But a good defensive effort by Victor Moreland saves at least a scoring opportunity on the part of Pittsburgh. The attempt was there. Aiden Knight and Pat Magali on the right side. McKenzie running it. Shoots it off the boards. Naguera got a piece, not all of it. Sibby sends it high far post and it goes out of play. We go to a break. Two to one Pittsburgh on the Spirit Soccer Network. And we're back live at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. John Paul Della Camera with Bruno Schwartz. McKenzie will play it on the left side to Kevin Marr. Two to one spirit lead. Played back to Papaleo in Chicago now in that tight man to man marking. Full length of the carpet. Pittsburgh escapes it up to midfield. Green now a good ball from Marr to Ostalchik in the middle of the field. McKenzie will try to join in the run. Ostalchik goes for it. Pushes on. Has Marr in the overlapping run on the left side. He'll get it. Kevin can't get a shot away. Bumps into Victor Moreland, but Hayden Knight will take it away. Up the near boards, Ostalcha, good read, and then takes the ball away. Greg will play it to the right point for Sibbies. Back on the left side for Kevin Marr. Marr trying to put it between the legs of Moreira, broken up, but Ostalcha, whose work rate has been strong all afternoon when he's been out there, and he came out on the second. He'll get it back now for McKenzie. Get some room right wing. Greg in the corner, tripped over the carpet. Tripped over a seam, plays it out now to McKenzie, and it shot into the crowd and out of play. So it looked like a good opportunity. Just unfortunately for Pittsburgh, goes by the boards as Ostalchik fell down in the corner. But Greg's work rate, I think, has been fantastic. And, uh, you know, his knees haven't been in the best of shape all, all uh, the last few years of his career. He had the shoulder separation, so he's never really had the full year. And he sat out this week, didn't play yesterday, and comes back with a strong performance this afternoon. Well, he's a, uh, the classic midfielder, uh, indoor and outdoor. I mean, always available, makes himself available for the pass. He's a good distributor of the ball. He has good vision, and he can put other people into the game. I would like to have seen Greg discover the MISL when he was maybe 25 or 26 years old because his moves and his
his passing skills are excellent. Ball is played back now to Papaleo by Pittsburgh. Cap is on with Smith, Hagen, Child, and Liberich. You might see the shifts get a little shorter as the game gets longer or more substitutes for both. And of course, tactical uh, change up as well. Uh, in order, because it's a 2 1 game, anybody's game still wide open. On the right side, it's Gordon Smith deep in his own zone. Terlecki has not played in this quarter. Kapka has not played since the second quarter. And O'Hara and Topolsky just that shift in the end before halftime. Hagen with it. But John Kowalski will have some rested players should he want to call on them. Livers trying to turn it upfield, draws a foul. And Rojas is going to get a penalty in the end as it happens right in front of Willie Roy. I couldn't see it from this angle, Bruno. It is too steep. Liverich, maybe we'll get it on our television monitor here. The game is not being televised here, but it is in Chicago, and we have the benefit of a replay. Liverich came up limping. We'll see it along the boards, and hopefully the camera will follow it. The first call is a foul, I believe. Oh, Rojas with the shoulder. That's that's an obvious call. You can see it in the replay up here. Yeah, Liverich was tackled uh, on the first attempt, and then Rojas came with a body check into the boards. And he will be called for that two minutes, and Pittsburgh will have an opportunity for a power play. Now, remember when Pittsburgh's power play was not so good. 24 for 74 isn't all that great. 32.4 is a percentage, but they've gone from about 10th to somewhere in the middle, somewhere around the uh, sixth spot. But since Mark Liberich has been added, they are 7 for 10 on the power play. And One have, for three yesterday. That's right, and have improved their power play stats from uh, uh, 24 goals and 74 attempts up to 32 percent efficiency. Now Liberch has not been scoring goals so he's not the uh, he's, it's not because he's scoring goals in the park but he adds another dimension with his hard left footed shot and he forces the defense to think a little bit differently because you've got such a great offensive weapon out there at the same time as the others. Oh, he's a threat. A Liberch shot this one goes wide. Off the boards Magali going for it now it is Simmy's knocking it back with Trelecki. Over to Mark Liberch. Penalty arc area for Simmies over to Terlecki on the right side. Back for Liverage. Free for the moment. Plays it in for Simmies. Off the boards. It comes back for Liverage. Now it's broken up by Fernandez. Terlecki will block that. Liverage will run it right back inside over the red line. Rolls it slowly for Stan. Minute 25 of the power play. Pittsburgh would love to get a power play goal here as Hagen smacks it to the left boards. Simmies out to Liverage for Terlecki. Stand right back to Mark Leverich. His shot punched out by Naguera. Child trying to turn and shoot. It's blocked on the play by Simonton. Magali will boot it, and it will go into the crowd out of play. So the power play will continue with a minute 12 of the man advantage. Pittsburgh moving the ball around very effectively. All one-touch passes, which gives people time to pick the corners and take the shots. Trelecki on the left side for Leverich. Mark poking it into the corner area for Sibbies. Back out to Leverich. For Terlecki on the left, sliding it to Hagen on the right. Hagen cuts it back. Liverich will shoot. It's deflected wide just by inches. Terlecki right side for Hagen. In the corner for Child. Off the boards. Naguera got a piece of it. And Rudy Glenn, dangerously, I think, gave it back to Naguera, who will hold on to it. Now he throws it way long. And coming out was Victor Moreland. Papaleo had cut him down. The Chicago bench wants two minutes. And they got it. Bill Maxwell gives Papaleo a two-minute penalty. I'll tell you, Chicago really caught Pittsburgh there. Willie Roy, sensing things, was able to get a change out there. And Moreland, who was not on that ship, came out and was able to get to the ball. Well, Pittsburgh uh, got caught standing ball watching after Naguera got the ball in his hands. And Naguera held it for about four seconds and then delivered a great outlet pass that hit just on this side of the red. Oh, so it was almost tied on this four on four situation. Chicago will end up with a slight power play when Pittsburgh uh, gets rid of this. It's more than slight, better than a minute. 28 seconds left on the Rojas penalty. When Rojas comes off, that's when Chicago will have the advantage. O'Hara on with Topolsky, Hagen, and Simmies, four on four. John O'Hara up the left wing side. We'll see what change John Kowalski makes when it is five on four for that last minute. Topolsky. To O'Hara. Now it is Hagen. Back for John O'Hara. Knocked back the other way to Papaleo. They're playing with the ball, trying to kill some time, trying to set up for this shorthanded situation. Rojas will get the ball to spoil Pittsburgh's hopes. And now McKenzie is on along with Hagen to Polsky and O'Hara. On the right side, a spalling shot blocked by John O'Hara. Basham lets it go for Granitza. Carl Hines holding it. Side last set, right back to Parkinson 
shoots it wide. McKenzie with a header off the right boards. For Chicago now on a power play as all five people are out on the floor. Pittsburgh trying to defend it. 48 seconds left. The Granitza pass doesn't find its way through as O'Hara knocks it out. Chicago's power play like Pittsburgh's in that there are no defenders out there at all. Rojas trying to pass it. O'Hara blocks that. Parkinson with a flip into the box. And there's O'Hara for like the third straight time. And Granitza is upset visibly. 26 seconds left on the man advantage. On the right side, Parkinson. Getting it to Granitza. Carl Hines, a perfectionist. Cuts it to the right side. Parkinson, a shot too high. Had Papaleo screened on that one. Granitza holding it from 45 feet away. Gives it to Parkinson. Shot blocked by Dave Hagen. Parkinson may have held on a little too long before pulling the trigger. Hagen and McKenzie were breaking up. Mack trying to lead. Hagen on the other side, broken up as McKenzie was taken down. Now on the left side, Terlecki is out. Penalty is over. Pittsburgh will get it. O'Hara sees Stan upfield. The ball a little behind him. Stan has Naguera out, but he can't turn and shoot. Looks for someone open. His shot is blocked. He had McKenzie wide open on the right wing. Back of Chicago on the break. Last shot, bad ball. He had Granitza wide open. Here's Terlecki. Now it's wide open for the first time this afternoon. Terlecki up to McKenzie. Now to John O'Hara. Cap signaling for the ball. He's wide open on the left. Heads it back into the box, but Naguera is there. And we may see Chicago bounce right back. 6.43 to go. Second quarter, 2-1 to one Pittsburgh. But it is a wide open game at this point. We'll see if it settles back into the discipline game we have seen most of the afternoon. I'll tell you, when we go back, we have a pushing foul on Chicago. O'Hara saw Trelecki, but he couldn't give him the ball when he wanted to. He just passed it to him a little bit behind him. And Stan had a man on him. McKenzie was open on the right side, and that's where the ball should have been. And then the game opened up considerably as the matchups went down out the door. And Morera's shot goes wide. Lost Dalcha. The reason I say the ball should have been played there was because Stan had a man in front of him, and that's who blocked the shot, not just Naguera. On the right side, Morera. To Granitza. Blocked by Ostalchik, and O'Hara plays it back to Joe Papaleo. Long toss up field headed away by Magali. Roberts does a nice turn. He's taken down, no foul. Gordon Smith now to Ostalchik. Six minutes left. Ostalchik taken down, and he let that go as well. So it's uh, you give me one, I'll give you one. Terlecki back at the midfield line. Towing it near side for Charlie Green. Back for Stan. Stan and Granitza battle. Now Earhart Cap helps out for Charlie Green. A little daylight. Runs into the attack zone, puts the brakes on, tries to get a ball through, and it's broken up. Victor Moreland got a piece. Now it's Parkinson holding it. Off the boards for Moreland. Green almost stole it away. But Chicago comes back. Five and a half to play. Upfield, Granitza wide open on the left. Magali unmarked. His shot missed. Parkinson, the rebound. Papaleo pushed it out. He came back and made a great play. He would have been beaten on it. Had that ball come across faster. But Joe Papaleo take nothing away. Kept this game from being tied. That looks spectacular the way he came back. He's getting a standing ovation because he showed tremendous courage and reaction on that one. Carl Heinz Granitza passed the ball to the other side, tried to redirect the play. And then Joe made a great, leaping, spectacular save to the near post again. I thought he may have injured himself. I thought he banged himself against those boards pretty hard, but he's OK. On the right side, Green, let's see if that save can pick up the spirit attack a little bit. Two to one, Pittsburgh leading over Chicago. It's been a while since we've seen a goal for Pittsburgh. Now Lasha breaking it back. Lubrich runs him down. Parkinson will get the ball back. Reflected by McKenzie into the crowd. We go to a break. Two to one, Pittsburgh in the Spirit Soccer Network. The Spirit would like to welcome the winners of the B94 USA Weekend Road Trips in Chicago. The B94s like the boy, where they saw the Spirit play the sting yesterday. Special welcome to Jim Adams, Tom Boyd, Don Herzlack, and Barbara Irving. As we come back, the Spirit are leading at 2-1. to one. We had a chance to look at that last Papaleo save on a TV monitor up here. Looked even better the second time. The reason was in that first shot, the ball was not fast, but it was spinning. It had just the right spin to it that made it very deceptive. Hagen up the left wing side. Plays it to Leverich. Shoots it in, didn't have enough on it. May have been looking for Child who was cutting across. Long toss by Naguera, and that goes out of play. So it is Pittsburgh's ball on the restart. McKenzie 
with Marr out there, Hagen, Child, and Liverich. Chicago seems to be coming a little bit frustrated this far. Joe Papalea coming up very big with a couple saves, and that will do it to you. But there's a lot of time remaining. Well, the one by Parkinson, he seemed to hit it on the half volley and, and kick the ball down. If he had gotten it on the full volley, there may have been nothing that Joe could have done on it. But that ball was spinning in such a way that it was still a very difficult save to make. And consider Joe came from far post to near post to make the play. Chicago now trying to come back in numbers, but it's only three on three. No advantage. Hayden Knight with a pass broken up. Kevin Marr with it. Coming back up the field at his own red line up the middle for child knocked back to Dave McKenzie Chicago not with the full court pressure like they've had before Mar in the corner banging with Knight one foul apiece that's all now we've got another one and it's called on Pittsburgh Chicago picking up Pittsburgh a little bit uh, a little bit short of the midfield line Chicago side of the neutral zone at least lately Glenn now on the right side to Simonton game has seemed to have settled back Bruno into the disciplined pace. Glenn now with a pass across the field, but Marr rejects that. Child off the boards, gets his own ball. Child with a couple of goals this afternoon. One unassisted, one assisted by Hagen, Rojas, and Benitez in the second quarter. We have not had a goal since 135 in the second quarter. Leverage. Upfield for Hagen, too far. Simonton breaks it up. Almost over three lines. Leverage testing it down. Here comes Mark Leverage over midfield. Lead ball for Child, too far off the mark. Hagen will get it off a deflection for Leverage. Mark trying to settle it. Now reversed it to the left side to McKenzie to stretch that defense. Mack running it up the left side. Off the boards. Nobody there. It comes out Leverage, a right footed shot. And it goes into the crowd out of play. We take our final break of the quarter, two to one Pittsburgh on the Spirit Soccer Network. Checking our U.S. Air out of town scoreboard in the second period. It's still the Minnesota Strikers and Kansas City Comets. No score. Live at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, John Paul Della Camera with Bruno Schwartz. It is a two to one lead. Spirit on top. Charlie Green. Broken up by Magali at the Spirit Red Line. Magali to Granitza. Open man on the right wing is Spalding, but nobody sees him. Now in the corner, Roberts comes out. A shot rejected by Pavaleo. Another one is blocked wide. Headed down to the neutral zone by Simonton. For Derek Spalding, didn't see Ostalcic running up his back, but now Spalding does a turn and comes back the other way. On the left side of Magali. Attacking left to right of the sting. It's a two to one spirit lead. Played out to Pat Magali. Ostalchik on him. Magali holding it. Plays it back. Neutral zone. Simonton. Kogunitsa back to goal. Plays it into the box. Broken up. He'll try it again. And that goes into the crowd. At that time, Kogunitsa was marked by Adam Tupolsky. They can always move Karl Heinz back. He has played as a midfielder before. And they could use him back and send somebody else forward if they choose to go that route. And that uh, could be a smart tactical move because it would have to force one of the Pittsburgh defenders to come out and expose a lot of space in the back. Grunitza coming back. He's upended by Ostalcic. Play on. Right side, Magali shot broken up. Ostalcic battling. Topolsky on the block. It's getting rougher out there. No calls up for Trelecki. Three on two. Numbers for Pittsburgh. Standard of the attack zone to Topolsky to Green. Off the mark. Ball was a bit too far in front of Charlie and was off the ground by a few inches. Charlie hustling back to win the ball for O'Hara. I thought that ball had gold written all over that whole play. Great effort by Charlie Green there, but the ball was just a little bit too far in front of him. Ostalcic on the right side. The shot is blocked. Greg will knock it back for Gordon Smith. Left side for Green. Terlecki giving him a little room. Charlie's shot deflected by Moreland. Less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Green trying to play it to Ostalcic. Broken up by Roberts. Now to the left side for Magali. Magali and Ostalcic collide. Now Terlecki gets the ball away. Stan will draw a foul for Holden. They're pushing, Megan. Stan will play it in quickly for Gordon Smith. He'll tore to the left side. John O'Hara, the team captain on the go. Takes a drive, missing on the far post. Ostalcic will get it settled down. Greg for Stan Trelecki. Outside the penalty arc, one on one. Plays it into the corner now for Ostalcic. Shot off the boards wide. Stan rebound. Blocked by Victor Aguera. On the line, knee save. That's a great play. That looked like a sure goal for Pittsburgh. Stan outside the box. Still with it. Knocked away from him, he'll get it right back. Trelecki holding it. Takes a shot, and Aguera makes the save. Confusion in the box for Chicago, and finally Magali bangs it out of there. 
Gordon Smith heads it right back the other way. Val Fernandez back the other way. For a moment, the marking has been has broken down for Chicago. Two seconds left. There's the horn as an O'Hara shot hits the crossbar from way out. That's it for the third quarter of play. Pittsburgh two. The long ball the other way, headed away by Spalding, rushed through by Gordon Smith, and off Gordon Smith's right foot, it is deflected into the crowd. So the Sting will have a kick in. Pittsburgh can get the next goal. A three to one lead would be what they had yesterday, but at a later stage of the game, if Chicago gets it, they're trying to two and remember what they did yesterday when they got that momentum. So Pittsburgh must continue to play their good defense, but remember to go forward. Even though uh, no one scored in that third quarter, hard to imagine two teams like this That's going right. another quarter without a goal as it's played into the box and Gritzza trying to head it, hit the post. Moreland the shot and it's deflected out of play and I almost uh, caught it right there. That's the third time uh, this afternoon that the ball hit the inside of the post and came out. So a little bit of uh, luck on the part of Pittsburgh, but just shows you how dangerous uh, the Chicago Sting can be. Neil Roberts will have a corner kick coming up. Pittsburgh's going to watch out here on these set plays that deep. Roberts out to Moreland, the low shot, and he scores. And this time it hit the inside of the post and bounced in rather than out. And again, it was a set play. It was a perfect setup from a corner kick. Uh, Moreland getting the ball and just passing it out. And then a one touch pass by Moreland actually hits the inside of the post, bounces in, and Chicago has tied the game at two. 36 seconds into the fourth quarter on the corner kick taken by Neil Roberts, finished by Victor Moreland from about 40 feet out. Good shot. Leverage is taken down. We've got a foul on Jose Marrero. So Earhart Cap will put it in play from the left wing side of the field. His pass is blocked. He'll take it again. He just shot it wide. Good effort after the first play had been blocked. Neil Roberts now in his own zone. We'll see what that goal does to Chicago. It's tied at two. More importantly, you see what it does that's, to Pittsburgh. That's right. Because they can still dictate. They're the home team. They need this win. Hogan with a shot. Black will try it again. Black by Naguera. Kicked out to the near boards. Cap run down from behind by Moreland. That's a foul. And it's called the direct kick for Pittsburgh. And the attacking third. And Pittsburgh will have a set play. Gordon Smith will take it from the near side. Lubitsch is on with Child and Hagen, Cap and Gordon Smith. Gordon plays it to the near boards for Hagen. He's blocked. Hagen will get it back. Now knocks it out. Center point, Erhard Cap for Gordon Smith at the left point off the boards for Lubitsch. Mark outside the box, drills one blocked by Moreland. Smith reacts, picks it up, sends it to the near side, but it's headed out. And it lands out of play. Last touch by Chicago. And it'll be Pittsburgh's ball, and they'll make changes with his.